I've had so many supervisors throughout my time in academia. I had ones through my PhD and one of the projects I was on had five supervisors. And even though each one had their own personality, their own distinct pet peeves, these are the things that I think they wish I'd stop doing. And also, I've supervised master's students and co-supervised some PhD students. Um, and I feel like, yes, this is what I wish they had stopped doing. And the last one, may surprise you. Stay around till the end. So the first one is that I felt like if I was just trying to solve a problem, I would have to come up with a solution before approaching my supervisor. Because what it does, it changes the dynamic of the conversation. Now, if you're having a normal meeting, it's fine. You've got plenty of time, maybe an hour, maybe more, to kind of like talk about solutions, talk about angles of attack for this particular challenge. But if you're kind of like cornering a supervisor, I often find it far more productive going in with a solution. I certainly liked it from a supervisor perspective where a student would come up to me and be like, I'm having this problem. This is what I think about it. What do you think? These are the options that I've come up with to solve this problem. It makes it much easier. And also it stops you becoming the plaything for your supervisor's whims. Um, if you put a supervisor on the spot, they will instantly kind of go into like idea mode. And what you need to do is focus those ideas towards the solution you will think works. So always turn up with a solution to a problem if you are kind of cornering a supervisor. Allow those sort of like exploratory things for much longer uh, meetings and, and update reports and that sort of stuff. But yes, it works both uh, better for either side of the party of this agreement if you go with a solution to your problem. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. I'll put a link in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails, everything from the tools I use, how to write the perfect abstract, my TEDx talk, and more. It's exclusive content only available on that newsletter, so go sign up now. As a supervisor, one of the first things I said to my students was do not hide problems from me. A problem in academia is typically much easier to solve as soon as it pops up. If you let problems simmer and kind of sort themselves out, they got a, a habit of getting much worse than if you had tackled them when they were first sort of like uh, noticed or they first reared up their ugly head. So yes, don't hide problems. Stop hiding problems. I know a load of supervisors just want you to be honest. I certainly always used to say, no matter how bad it is, you won't get into trouble trouble for like telling me the issue. I once broke a $20,000 piece of equipment. First thing I did, boom, straight to the supervisor. We sorted it out. Sure, it was a massive mistake, but we got there, we got over it. And so I always share that story with my students because I'm always like, you know, we do need just uh, you know open communication. The last thing we need to do is you to feel like you're gonna get in trouble or that I'm gonna think you're stupid. You know, I had the fair share of, my fair share of bad problems throughout my PhD and it was solved quickly if I went straight to my supervisor with it. So stop hiding problems. They'll come back bigger and bite you in the ass far worse than if you snuff them out as soon as they arrive, arise. Now this one is actually from my PhD. My supervisor actually told me off a little bit about this. They said, start recording meetings. So you have to stop just turning up and expecting things to go into your mind and staying there. When you turn up to a supervisor meeting, it is your job to be the secretary of that meeting. And later on, you may want to chair that meeting. In fact, I often found that it was much more productive if I was the chair and the secretary of a meeting while I was presenting. I did very formal presentations. Go check out my other video where I talk about how to make like really productive supervisor meetings. But essentially, you have to write stuff down. Now, in the early days, you're like, yeah, okay, I've got this, I, you know, or whatever. But it, it, it goes deeper than that. Um, even if you can remember everything, your supervisor needs to see you actively writing. And it's a weird sort of like mind game. I liked it when I was on the supervisor side. Just someone writing down what you're saying just goes, okay, well, then they're remembering it, they're capturing it, which means that if we do need to revisit this, they've got a record of it. 
And so writing down during meetings everything that was decided, everything that you should do next, and then recapping that at the next meeting is so important. So stop turning up and sort of like being a passenger to a meeting. Turn up with a uh, with a pen, with your notepad, and write down everything and record all of the important actions. It's a bit boring during the meeting, but your supervisor will thank you for it later. And you'll thank yourself for it when you're like, oh, what did we agree on? It's right there in the book. Another thing your supervisor wishes you'd stop doing is waiting for the perfect result before writing a paper. Now, I often waited far too long before launching into writing a paper. Um, papers are the academic kind of currency, and the more you can write, the better. I've actually got an ebook, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, which you can buy at academiainsider.com, um, where you know, you just need to pump out as many as possible. So if you're starting to head down, you're starting to collect data, you're starting to collect ideas, you may want to start drafting out a paper. Now, all I mean by a draft is a bullet point of like, I think this could be the story, and then present that to your supervisor. You'll They'll quickly find gaps and issues, and that's part of the peer of like review process with your supervisor. But don't wait before creating the simple bullet point outline. All you need is results, this result, this result, this result, and then under each one have a little discussion, be like this leads to this leads to this, and like a little conclusion based on the results you've gathered. And you'll often find that you only need one or two little experiments to fill the gaps. The game in academia is to write as often and as quickly as possible. And just by doing this with each result you get, you know, where can it squeeze into a paper and, and kind of like revolving all of your research around the output end seems to really work, uh, you know, keep the momentum up. So yes, start bullet pointing out those papers and presenting them to your supervisor earlier than you think. Another thing I really wished my students would stop doing is underestimating themselves. Now, students very quickly feel the imposter syndrome as soon as they enter a PhD, like they don't deserve to be there. The fact you've got there and that you've been accepted into a position under a supervisor means you can do it. And unfortunately, our brains play tricks on us and say, well, everyone else is cleverer than you. You can't possibly do this. They must have made a mistake. All of those things bubble to the surface. And when I've supervised students, I often find themselves being very um, unconfident with the things they're doing, or the way they're presenting themselves, or the um, the solutions they've come up to. You know, there's there's like a little bit of a hesitancy but behind discussions or solutions or proposals that they're putting forward. And I think um, it works much better. And you know, it's not easy to get rid of these feelings, but acting confident and you know, like pretending you're a confident person actually really works. Sometimes I would not be confident. I'd go in, I'd be like, okay, here we go. Here's a little bit of acting. Just pump up that confidence side a little bit and the meeting went crazily well because they thought oh okay they, they, they really trust themselves and they, they like seeing the excitement behind the research it maybe reminds them of when they were an early researcher and that excitement that kind of confidence really helps sort of like keep everyone on track and moving down the right uh, road throughout the entire research process so stop underestimating yourselves back yourselves, easier said than done, but once you manage to kind of crack that code for yourself, you'll notice that the PhD process and research is just more fun in general too. So there we have it. There are the five things that I think your supervisor wishes you would stop doing. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. And also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I have my ebook, the ultimate academic writing toolkit to help boost your career. And also uh, I've got my insider forum there as well. So go check that out. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.